Yes, thank you. Thank you, Adam. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my topic for today is a precious metals briefing. I'm going to talk about gold in search of the bottom. Obviously, I have no clue about the future. I'm only cooking with water like everybody else. Um, all I know is that I don't know anything and please take responsibility for your own results and for your life uh, as well, please. All right, let's get this started. First chart is a daily chart on gold, the last 16 months in the gold market. And we start on the left side. Uh, you see this uh, big flash crash in August of 2021 when uh, the Chinese or the Asian markets opened early morning and Monday and uh, gold quickly crashed basically more than $100 within an hour. That's where we're starting. That also was the low of uh, last year, 1680. Gold had already tested that level two times before during the year. I think it was in March and April. And uh, that flash crash basically uh, ended that corrective period last year. Um, this is the support zone 1680 back then. And then gold tried to basically start an uptrend. It took a while, but by mid of December, this is actually over the last 10 years, quite often that around the last FOMC meeting of the year, gold tends to make an important reversal to the upside. Uh, the same thing happened last December. And then we had one last pullback. And then, uh, as you surely remember, uh, Russia invaded Ukraine. And you had this massive spike in all commodity markets and, of course, also in the gold market. Gold went up to $2,050, just uh, $5 shy of its all-time high, which uh, we had seen in August 2020, more than two years ago already. And that was obviously a clear reversal then, early March, uh, the stock market, the bond market, cryptos, everything had been already under pressure. Liquidity was already drying up in the markets. And then at some point, of course, it was also the gold market who had to turn around. And that also was clearly a seasonal uh, top in spring. Very typical that gold finds a top in, in uh, let's say, March between April, um, sometimes May, but usually early spring. That's the time for gold to top out. And then we have seen this massive sell-off over the last 6.8 months. Gold lost 22%. Um, pretty unprecedented move in the good old-fashioned gold market. Um, however, it is all obviously correlated and connected with the liquidity drying up, interest rate, rate hikes by the Fed, and generally a liquidity crunch in the whole financial market. And uh, if you remember 2008, uh, gold cannot disconnect from that because in the end of the day, it's all about liquidity. So this was quite a move. Uh, we have, I think, seven red monthly candles in a row. I can't remember that the gold market did anything like that before over the last 50 years. And gold basically slided towards the south, uh, finding a low here in uh, late July, little summer rally, but it failed at the downtrend channel. And then the $1680 level finally did not hold anymore. And gold sold off even further, 1615. That was the low in September. It got tested in October and then again just two weeks ago. So we have a triple bottom right now in gold at 1650-ish. And as you can see over the last two weeks, gold did quite a spike together with the stock markets. It's up uh, from 1615, uh, reaching, what was it, uh, two days ago, 1786 or something. So nearly $170 rally in two weeks. That's quite a move. Um, and gold has not yet reached this classical 200-day moving average, the red line. I assume it should do that in the next few days probably, but this line is still moving lower, so I'm not too excited in the short term. I think this is a short squeeze, what's going on in the gold market right now. But first of all, the daily chart, I just wanted to bring you up to date. And also, I need to bring you up to date in the big picture. So we're zooming out. This is the last 20 years in the gold market. This is a monthly chart. We're starting in the left corner at the famous Gordon Brown double bottom when the British finance minister sold all, your, uh, all the, the British central bank gold right at the low of a 20-year bear market. Unbelievable in hindsight, but that's what happened. And that started this massive 
10-year bull market in, in precious metals in gold in 2001. Gold went up 650%. Then we had this top in uh, 2011 at 1920. Gold came back down over the next four and a half years, lost 45%. It was quite a difficult period back then in, in the precious metal sector. Finally, more or less seven years ago to the day, gold made an important low at $1,045. From there, it recovered to the new all-time high, which is still in place, 2075. This is uh, this one here in um, August 2020. Gold went up nearly 100% from that important low seven years ago. Made a slightly lower high this year at 2070. And overall, in the last two years, gold is down 22%. That's the very big picture, the rallies and the pullbacks. And if we take this away and look at the chart again, uh, we can see that actually gold is working on a very proper uh, cup and handle pattern. I, I would say it's a proper cup of tea, a proper British cup of tea, <laughs> if you ask me. It takes some time. Last year, I showed that chart already on a few presentations, and I said it will take time. Be patient. Gold needs some more time here. But this pattern is still in place. And all it takes for gold is to break above $2,000, roughly speaking. Okay. Let's say 1950 to 2050 to give it a little bit of a broader range, but that's what it, what, what it takes for gold. It needs to break through that resistance line. And there has been a lot of energy being compressed over the last 10 years. So once this breaks out, you will see a very, very sharp move in the precious metal sector. And first of all, it will be gold who's going to move. I'm adding down here the slow stochastic oscillator, which is my favorite uh, oscillator indicator go-to. I don't use a lot of other stuff. I believe in Bruce Lee when he said, um, I don't fear the man who uh, practice a thousand different moves. I fear the man who practice one move a thousand times. So that's my relationship with the slow stochastic <laughs> oscillator. And as you can see, we had this sell signal uh, at the top in August uh, two years ago. This uh, sell signal was confirmed again uh, in uh, spring of this year. And now this uh, slow stochastic momentum oscillator is very oversold on the monthly chart. So that means in the very big picture, gold is nicely oversold in place, basically, with a lot of space to the upside to run for not only a few months, but actually to run for probably one, two, three years until this oscillator gets really overbought again. So that's a perfect setup. It's not a buy signal yet on the monthly chart, but it's getting in a really nice position to, to, to start a new uptrend over the next few months, I would say. So that's the big picture. <clears throat> if we go to the textbook cup and handle pattern, uh, this is the 2011 top at 1920. This is the bottom in 2015. This is the all-time high still in place at 2,075. And we are either here or here. That's where I believe the gold market is right now, okay? Either we've seen the low already or we're going to see it very soon. And all it takes, as I showed you, is the breakout above this um, uh, uh, resistance line at around $2,000. You can then take the depth of this uh, cup, add it to the breakout, and you get a price target. And um, the best entry, if you look for confirm, confirmed signals, if you want to have a low risk uh, approach, you wait for a pullback. So once you get this breakout here, the orange circle, uh, and then uh, you get the, the breakout starts, usually it will pull back first to test the breakout. So let's say gold breaks out above $2,050 in the next 12 months. It comes back to maybe $2,000, $2,050. That's your perfect confirmed entry signal, okay? Because uh, many people have a challenge to, to do really contrarian trades in the longer picture, so that would be a confirmed trend following entry. And if we use that method on the monthly chart, the depth of the cup, adding it to a, the potential breakout around $2,000, this is a price target. I think the probability for gold to move to $3,500 over the next two to three or four years is extremely high. I would say at least 90, maybe even 95%. That's my current price target for gold. We are not there. Obviously, as you can see, gold is still in, in that handle and it could still take a few more months uh, until it's more clear that it's really breaking out. But 
uh, in the big picture, I think that's for me, it's very clear where we are. And if we, we've been looking at gold against dollars, and my charts are all spot gold, but if you look at gold against the bond market, you have a little bit of a similar pattern, but here it seems that gold is already a step ahead and breaking out against bonds. And the fixed income market, the bond market, is the largest sector in the financial market, it's the most important one. That's where all the conservative players looking, looking for some yield. That's where all your pension funds uh, investing the money. And um, I assume that uh, inflation will stay rather high. The bond market had a very challenging year uh, this year. And I assume it will stay uh, or will remain a very challenging environment for, for bond investors over the next few years, simply because high inflation rates Real uh, rates are uh, uh, not catching up with inflation. Uh, central bankers trying to raise interest rates, but they cannot go, cannot go too high. And basically, you're losing money with bonds. So where can these people go? They can only go to the gold market if they look for a conservative uh, form of investment. There is nothing else. If, they, if the bond investors want to move in the stock market, it's not possible. So I believe the institutional money and it doesn't take too much of it, but I believe the institutional market will drive that breakout in the gold market and drive gold prices much higher over the next few years. And you can see we still have a, a nice uh, confirmed buy signal in place. The breakout is, uh, is happening. I think it's a very important job because the institutional money is now questioning the narrative of the last 40 years where they could make basically blindly money in the bond market and it's not that easy anymore or actually in most cases not possible anymore. And even more important than the gold against bond chart I believe is the gold eight year cycle. So gold has the tendency to make an important low every eight years roughly speaking. Sometimes it's seven years, sometimes it's seven and a half years it took also uh, eight and a half years sometimes, but roughly speaking, every eight years, gold makes an important low. This is the last 50 years. Gold started to trade in uh, 1968, and the first important low came in, in in 1976. The next one came in at 19, in 1985. The next one came in in 1993. Then you had one in 2001, which started the bull market uh, that I showed you on the monthly chart. Then you had the financial crisis in 2008, when gold found a double uh, bottom at $680. And the most recent eight-year cycle low was in December 2015, seven years ago. And the next eight-year cycle low is due in the next 12 months. Or we might have seen it actually already in September. That would have been a very early cycle low, but it's not impossible. So either we have seen it, or it's going to happen within the next 12 months. If you put this together, gold is on the way to a very important 12, uh, eight year cycle low, on the same time working on the cup and handle pattern, breaking out at some point. Uh, I think the chances that gold will see a massive three year bull market are rather very high and we are probably very close to the bottom. Um, so that's the big picture analysis. And um, if you uh, look at sentiment, which I believe is obviously one of the most important part of uh, uh, the markets, because in the end of the day, we are all just trading and investing perceptions. And um, gold sentiment is extremely pessimistic, similar to what we've seen in uh, August 2018. Back then, gold had corrected back to 1160. And what followed out of this first green uh, circle here is, has been an 80% rally over the following two years in the gold market. And we are now a little, a kind of a similar setup, maybe not that extreme like uh, in August 2018 yet, but uh, it, it, the sentiment is beaten down. You can see, I mean, there's not a lot of people at the conference. The mood is rather uh, dire, I would say. Um, it's hard to get money um, for, for, for the mining companies. Um, it's a very, very depressed sentiment. And that's exactly the environment where you're going to see usually the start of a new uptrend. Even though we might not have the information yet what exactly is triggering it or why, somehow, usually this is how markets work, all right? So sentiment is extremely 
oversold and pessimistic. This was confirmed in September with the front page indicator. Gold loses status as haven. Um, that's also the classical contrarian signal showing up around an important bottom. And the commitment of trades report where the commercials basically hedging their activities in the gold futures market um, <clears throat> are also looking very good now. You can see they have reduced their short position recently to uh, only 75,000 contracts. Uh, below 100,000 uh, contracts, uh, short contracts, that is actually already a bullish signal to me. Maybe it could still improve a little bit further, but the commitment of trades where the big players playing in the paper gold market uh, actually also gives me a, a, a buy signal already. And seasonality, gold has a good uh, established seasonal pattern. We are here in this uh, rather tricky autumn kind of period. September, October, November usually is challenging for the gold market, but latest by mid of December, gold, uh, with, it, with the last FOMC meeting of the year, usually gold tends to turn around and then you get this massive run in the end of the year and uh, up to end of February, often even into March, sometimes even into April and May, but most of the time that's the pattern. Uh, from, from mid-December until end of February, very bullish. After that, you have a sideways period. So the seasonality right now is not really giving us a green light, but in, within, a f I would say, four to five weeks, this is also becoming bullish. So that could mean we get one more pullback, one lower low in the gold market, and then seasonality would help to basically establish that final low in this correction in the gold market and... Um, I believe 2023 is looking very promising for gold investors. Uh, but before you get too bullish, there is a caveat in the short term. I mentioned it before already. I think what we have seen over the last two weeks is just a short squeeze, a bear market rally in the stock markets and a short squeeze for uh, gold. I'll take you back to 2008. That's when the, the, the big deflationary crash happened and I myself was heavily invested in gold back then, thinking that once the cr stock market would crash, uh, I should be protected with my gold investments. But I had to learn the painful lesson that uh, it's all about liquidity. And gold dropped from $1,000 to $680 together with everything else. And we're experiencing exactly the similar situation this year over the last 12 months, uh, or let's say in, in gold uh, since March. So um, this is 2008, we had this uh, top, the first one when Bear Stearns went bankrupt, then uh, a lower uh, high in the summer, and then uh, gold started to crash, the dollar got really strong, the stock market crashed, and gold basically went all the way down to $680, and you can see here, you had a very crazy strong rally within two weeks, uh, and this is very similar to what we've seen over the last two weeks, uh, gold tried to uh, regained the 200 day moving average back then three times, but it failed. And then once it broke back lower, then it quickly went to a new low. And um, that then actually, those two uh, green arrows here, those two, they marked the double low in the financial crisis in 2008. And gold bottomed out four months before the stock market. Okay, so I, I strongly believe that gold will be the first one to sniff out a change in the money policy and uh, start rallying and recovering way before uh, the stock market and everything else. And important takeaway from here also that you can see the, the remaining downside back then, even after that short squeeze here, actually it was not much lower, right? I mean, 730 was the low in, in, in September, then 680, the final double low. So you had another $50 that the bears made basically progress on the downside. Similar to today, I don't think there's a lot of downside anymore in gold. We are, we've seen 1650. If it's really that gold wants to do one more lower low, let's say 1600, 1550, 1575, it's, it's not a lot. It would be from today, uh, today's price right now, worst case, $200 on the downside. While I showed you $3,500 is a realistic target on the upside. So you would risk $200 on the downside making uh, $1,700, $800 on the upside. It's a wonderful eight to one risk reward ratio. So I think for a mid to long term gold investment, you have a really, really nice, good setup at the moment. And also uh, be reminded of 2008. Once this double low was in place, gold quickly rallied all the way back to $1,000. So in today's case, that would mean gold would probably rather quickly within a few months be able to recover to those 
$2,000, which is the line in the sand now in the gold market. And then maybe, okay, maybe it takes another attempt and a, a little bit of a pullback for two, three months, and then another attempt. And then finally, usually, probably in, an, in, in, in let's say, August, September, that's uh, rather the strongest time in the gold market. That would be a good time next year for gold to break above 2000 and start that breakout scenario that I showed you. And coming quickly back to the daily chart, you can see we had this, sell, uh, this buy signal here in October. Right now, my slow stochastic oscillator is bullish embedded. That means the uptrend is still locked in. So I think gold will try another run towards the $1,800 in the short term. Um, the 200-day uh, moving average is at $18.02. Uh, that's the, the line in the sand, or that's the resistance. It failed classically. On Monday, I think, at this 38.2 Fibonacci retracement from the whole correction since March. Uh, that was to be expected. Gold pulled back this morning a little bit. So in the very short term, we could see another one or two weeks of rather good, strong price action in the gold market. And then I think we get one pullback. And that pullback will be telling how, how low is it going. If it goes below this 1680 support level that I showed you a few times, then we make one more lower low in the gold market. If the 1680 can hold, I think we've seen the lows already and gold will then start a series of higher lows and that will bring us back into an uptrend. So um, last uh, chart here from gold on the weekly. Uh, we had nice divergences over uh, the later summer and early autumn already. That's, that's something that it takes time for a market to change, right? Um, and, and this is a process, but the, the bottoming process is definitely in place. Short term, a falling Bollinger Band, this, this blue line here, uh, 18 and 10. Uh, I doubt that gold will be able to directly push through those uh, Bollinger Bands. So short term, 1790 to 1820 is strong resistance. I don't think gold will make it through that. But I'm watching the pullback that is uh, coming after that. So. And this is the important support zone I told you, 1680. Three times tested last year, this, this year as well, held two times and then finally it broke, now it's back above. I think that's a very important uh, line in the sand on the downside, uh, the bulls need to defend this, otherwise we're gonna see one more low low. But I, I don't see a lot of downside anymore in gold. We've seen already the dollar ro rolling over, uh, first strong pullback, uh, first time in the last 12, 13 months. So um, step by step, things getting in place. I don't think that the Fed can continue um, raising rates uh, after December. I think they will pivot in the first, latest in the second quarter of next year. And um, the reason why we had this massive stock market rally uh, over the last few weeks is because the sentiment has been beaten down so much. And I didn't met any bull over the last two months or the last four weeks. Everybody's panicking, everybody was afraid, nobody believes in the rally in the stock market. Sentiment in the stock market, and that means generally for financial markets and investing in assets, is so beaten down like we've seen it the last time in 2008 in the crash in the financial, uh, big financial crisis. And another important factor uh, in September, record hedges had been established, so what we basically are seeing since six weeks is a short covering rally. Uh, you can see retail money in end of September. The demand for hedges was going vertical. Everybody was hedging their portfolio. Everybody uh, finally put on shorts, but obviously way too late. All these positions are underwater now and have to be covered. And that's what's driving the market. And you don't have any macro reason right now to believe that the stock market will go up, that we might have seen an important low already. but uh, that's how market works, right? People, too many people were on the one side and that was in this case, they were all short in September and now they all have to cover. So, um, however, the macro picture, still, do I still have one minute? Okay, so the, the important macro picture, however, did not change yet. And this is the 10 year uh, US treasury rate. This is, means the yield that you get from the US government for their money, for your money, if, they, if you lend the money. In 1981, uh, you got from the US government 15.8% for your money every year. In the low of the, the corona crash here, you got only 0.3%. And this is a 40-year downtrend, falling interest rates. This has sparked a massive boom on the whole planet because credit got so cheap. Um, and now we have this one. And this is uh, a pretty 
obvious, clear reversal pattern. Something has broken, something has changed here. This downtrend for the last 40 years, um, I think, is over. And that means this environment of cheap money, of cheap credit, has ended. The uh, yield for the US uh, Treasury rate is already up 1,200% since, since the low. That means your mortgage rate, your leasing rates, finance, financing, whatever, uh, wherever credit is involved, everything has become much more expensive already. And you certainly have experienced this in your personal life. And uh, this 40-year this, this, uh, downtrend has very quickly recovered and retraced nearly two-thirds of this whole move already. But this is only price. You know that market is driven by price and time. And if we would say usually the market at least needs to retrace one-third uh, of price and time, if this is 40 years, we should also expect 10 years in time of a retracement, okay? So it could mean that the next 10 years we see a very high or rather high interest rate environment, which would be very difficult for stock market investments. And uh, the pattern here, technically speaking, was an, in, uh, an invert uh, uh, head and shoulder pattern in the bond market. And the target would be that yields are probably on the way to 8 to 10% over the next few years. It's not a gradual move. I guess it's a wild back and forth because the bond market's obviously depending on uh, what, what uh, the, the Fed uh, FOMC meeting also de decides. But then again, you can also make the argument that the bond market basically has dictated the Fed to uh, uh, raise interest rates over the last 12 months. So the important takeaway, after 40 years of falling interest rates, a very big fundamental change has happened. And as I said before already, this affects the conservative institutional money in the bond market. All right, and I think this money will come into the gold market over the next three, four years. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Just want to hook it back quickly to metals and mining companies. Is this the buying, buying opportunity now for uh, mining equities, gold mining equities, because of this scenario? Yes, I think that we have either, as I said, either we have seen the bottom already or we are very close within the next few weeks or let's say the next three to four months. Now is the time to, to get position yourself because this is a contrarian environment. You see there's not a lot of people, that's what you see at the bottom. If you have the, the time and the patience, the guts to sit through those investments for the next two, three years, I think you will do very, very well. Excellent. Yeah, very quickly though, um, we do have to crack on with the uh, presentations. First of all, congratulations. I think you do the best clear technical analysis on the gold market. Thank you. I have, this is the second time I'm listening to your speech. I saw, the, I listened to it in Zurich. I encourage everybody to go through everything again. The second time you understand it better. So what did I hear by listening it to the second time? All the arguments point that we have already seen the bottom. The only solid counter argument is that we are traumatized by the 2008 experience. So maybe we are, our judgment has been uh, sort of uh, dis distorted by, by this simple fact. So the probabilities maybe favor the fact that the, the, the second thing I would add is that there's no chart of GDX. So your remark was terrific. Uh, and, and, and the gold stocks are starting to move. Right, right. No, no, it's, it's been, the focus has been on gold, but of course, uh, I think gold stock is a separate uh, topic, but of course they, they should move first. Some of them did, uh, some of them did not. Um, so that's why I'm also a little bit questioning still whether we've really seen the bottom, but um, I think uh, gold stocks will be a terrific investment over the next three to, let's say two to three years for sure. Already, right, yes, yes, exactly. Okay, look, thank you so much, Florian. Thank you.